Appreciate the update. Are there questions for Director Wadsley? Okay, seeing none, thanks again. We'll close item 17G, Department Activity Report. And that brings us to item 25. And this is uh, also opening our commission regulations um, generally. So 25 is commission regulation 16-12, 2016 big game quotas for the 2016-17 season. Wildlife Staff Specialist Mike Cox, Cody Schroeder, Pat Jackson for possible action. The Commission will establish regulations for the numbers of tags to be issued for mule deer, pronghorn antelope, elk, bighorn sheep, black bear, and mountain goats for the 2016-17 seasons. Uh, support material has been provided, and I think what we'll do, as we have in past years, is step through these um, one hunt at a time. If we have the opportunity to cluster hunts, uh, we will do that. So. Page one um, for my handout is the recommended black bear quotas. Um, and I think this is one where we can take the resident quota on 6151, the companion non-resident 6251, as well as the combined objectives. So, Mr. Jackson, will you be presenting on this today? Yes. Okay. Well. <coughs> And just to make it clear, too, as far as CAD input and public comment, we will take comment before we approve each one of these hunts. So I'll try and announce which hunt we're on. We'll stop and take CAD input and comment and go from there. Mr. Jackson. Pat Jackson, staff specialist for the record. The department feels that our uh, black bear population is growing and that we could be issuing more tags, but uh, we are staying uh, in line with the recommendations of the black bear committee and recommending 41 resident tags, four non-resident tags, and setting a harvest limit quota of 20. And I should point out that at uh, the last commission meeting, the uh, uh, season was, was reduced. Correct, yeah, the season was, uh, the close date was moved from December 30th to December 1st at the season setting meeting. Questions for Mr. Jackson? Okay, seeing none. County Advisory Board inputs on the bear hunt, both resident, non-resident, and the objective. Sean Shea, Washoe County. Uh, we had quite a bit of discussion on this. Um, we had several motions made. Okay, I'll get to the gist of it. Um, we passed a recommendation of 47 resident tags and five non-resident tags. So it slightly increased those. We kept the harvest objective still at 20. And like I said, we, we had a motion of a lot higher. We had mentioned a lower. So and two people, one wanted higher, one wanted lower. The three, the three compromised in 47 and 5. So that's one that you guys know. That's really interesting. And that was because um, you're still taking by the way less than 10% of the bears that you're harvest. Mr. Dixon. For the record, Paul Dixon, Clark Camp. Um, we had significant discussion on this also in our cap. That's Judad, Commissioner Valentine. It's not here to see actually attended the <coughs> represented things a little longer than I can appear. And uh, we had a split vote. Uh, and we ended up basically agreeing with the, the number of tags. But they wanted the uh, take to be increased from 20 to 30 um, and because the cab felt that there are plenty of bears, at least from the information that we've been able to glean from Carl Lackey and the department. And we felt that it's time to increase the number of bears taken or give more opportunity for, for things out there. And the, the dissenting votes just, you know, were. Uh, from cab board members who felt that there was no basis for changing the number, uh, you know, the, the take number because we have never met the, the harvest objective yet. And that's where we were at, so that's why it was a little off. Thanks. For the record, Tom Castanelli with Humboldt County. We also supported Washoe County's recommendations for the same reasons. We had um, it was a unanimous vote to support Washoe County. Thank you.
Bob Cook with Douglas County Advisory Board. We voted to increase the bear tag quota from 251, which is 46 per residence, five for non-residents, with the intent to create a governor's tag. And we would like the harvest limit to remain the same. Additional County Advisory Board input. Seeing none, we'll open it up for public comment in Las Vegas. This is specific to the resident and non-resident fair hunt quotas and harvest objectives. Thank you. This is uh, Stephanie Myers from Las Vegas. Yesterday, one of your commissioners said that he did not believe that there was any project under the predation management plan that animal advocates would like. May I suggest that there is no big game hunt that this wildlife commission would not like. The black bear hunt is a hunt that should be banned. It is immoral. It is a trophy hunt and unpopular in the extreme with the public. Problem bears can be dealt with without hunters. Please make the quota one bear this year with no females. A mother bear should never be allowed to be killed by hunters. When a mother bear senses a threat, she's going to hide her cubs. And so after the hunter kills the mother bear, the cubs will almost certainly die also. Now, how can you, how can you live with yourselves when you allow this? Thank you very much. Do you have a comment? Yeah. Hi, Oh, go ahead. Uh, one more, just Lisa Palel from Las Vegas. I just want to say I support Stephanie's statement. Uh, I personally think trophy hunting is immoral, but that's not important because since Cecil, it's really the public that is against trophy hunting. Um, I think you're going to begin to see increased protesting and, and uh, just not support for this, and it, it just informationally, uh, it's different than other hunting. Thank you. That closes comment in Las Vegas, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Elko, Black Bear Hunt? No comment. Elko. Okay, public comment. Thank you, Elko. Public comment in Reno. Come on up. I know there's several of you that want to talk. You're welcome to form a line. <coughs> Please just state your name for the record, and if you're representing a group, let us know that. <clears throat> yes, my name is Janelle Richards. I'm representing No Bear Hunt Nevada. Uh, I have a letter here I'd like to read. Nevada Wildlife Commissioners, No Bear Hunt Nevada opposes the Nevada Bear Hunt in totality in recognition that a 2016 season has been set. We request a quota of one and that female bears be excluded from the hunt. Why a quota of one? The well-known bear biologist, Dave Garcellus, stated, quote, Despite our rapidly increasing knowledge of black bears, there are a few places in the world where we really know how black bear populations are faring. I argue that bear conservation would benefit from highlighting <coughs> rather than hiding this uncertainty. Assessments of bear populations often are based on records of dead animals and trends in habitat availability. These data produce dubious indications of population trend. Case studies relating to the trade in bear parts, sport harvests, and nuisance kills indicate that records of human-killed bears may not be accurate and may not necessarily reflect changes in population size." End quote. Why do we know about, what do we know about the bear, Nevada bear population? Nevada's bear population is no longer increasing. The Nevada bear population is no longer increasing in ranges with the highest bear densities, the Sierra, Pine Nut, and Virginia ranges. As estimated in the 2015 Big Game Status Report, the Nevada bear population was 456 plus or minus 39 in 2011. A more recent estimate of 445 plus or minus 14 was given for 2014. It would be irresponsible to assume that the bear population was increasing 
in other less habitable mountain ranges when it is at its best stable in ranges with better bear habitat. The bear is one of the slowest reproducing mammals, second only to the musk ox. Nevada does not have calculated densities of bears within specific hunt units, possibly resulting in local overharvest. Exploitation of bears in Hunt Unit 291 has continued to increase. During the last two years, 23 of 31 bears were killed in the Pine Nut Range, an unconscionable 74%. Drought and fires are negatively impacting the bear habitat. The drought, the drought has resulted in a significant decline in the quality of the bear habitat. Multiple fires involving pinyon pines have worsened this decline. The pinyon pine reduction plan is also underway in the Pine Up Range. A study in 2012 by Redmond et al. demonstrated a 40% decline in pinyon pine seed cone production from 1974 to 2008 in New Mexico. The decline was most pronounced in areas of greatest warming. This suggests that seed cone production will become a future bottleneck for regeneration and will result in a decline in wildlife species that rely on them. According to a couple of companies who collect and sell pine nuts, the pine nut crops have been poor in Nevada. The National Climate Data Center reports a continuing trend of rising average temperatures for the state of Nevada. Harvest data, especially when sample size is limited, may not accurately reflect the bear population. It is inherently risky to hunt small populations of carnivores, a fact that is well known in the scientific literature. Typically, age, sex, harvest data is used to detect a severe population decline without an in-depth analysis. Many studies have found harvest data to be misleading. Age sex structures of a declining population may be the same as an increasing population. Additionally, there can be a delay between the decline and evidence on harvest data. Due to the small sample size of Nevada's harvest data, the matrix currently used by NDAL to determine viability of the bear population, although interesting to look at, does not tell us anything of statistical significance. Harris et al. determined that only by comparing severely over-harvested populations of grizzly bears with equilibrated populations could the probability of detecting a significant population decline be raised to greater than 60% with a sample size of 72 to 153 animals. Hunter selectivity can have broad implications. Implications of hunter selectivity may be greater in small populations of carnivores. To paraphrase Milner and Paul, 30 seconds. Hunters tend to prefer a larger body size and greater trophy value. Selective harvesting can destabilize social structures and the dominance hierarchy. There may be loss of social knowledge, increased infant infanticide, and habitat changes among reproductive females. A common feature of these mechanisms is that they can ultimately depress recruitment and in extreme, in extreme cases result in total reproductive collapse. Richard, your time's up. We received your letter and it's been distributed to the commission. Okay. So if you have a summary point, please make it. Catherine will finish the letter. Okay. <coughs> um, well, you don't want to finish it? I'm good, thanks. Um, I don't uh, really have a summary point because there's still points I wanted to make. Can I speak personally? No, if you're representing the group, you're, you get your six minutes and we can't make it additive, so. And you don't get to speak, it's just a person then on another time. If you had been under <laughs> six minutes, I would have allowed you to do it. Okay. okay. Thank you for your comment. Next public comment, Reno. Ms. Bricker. Um, good morning, my name is Catherine Bricker and I'm going to make a personal comment uh, uh, in support of No Bear Hunt Nevada's position to exclude female bears from being hunted. Um, our organization has long argued that a deficiency of the current bear management system 
is its failure to recognize and protect the dynamics of the developmental history of mother and cubs. At the time of the hunt, while approximately half of the cubs might be weaned, and so their mother be labeled dry in the mortality reports, the importance of that mother to her cubs still exists. Researchers all agree that mother bears provision for and protect her cubs until they are 16 to 17 months old. The motion to exclude female bears from being hunted failed to advance from bear committee by a tie vote of two to two. Proponents of this exclusion argued that the intent of the current NAC to protect bear families in light of current bear research on bear behavior fails to do so. Uh, NAC, as you know, does not allow the killing of a female bear accompanied by cubs. However, current scientific studies demonstrate mother bears routinely leave their cubs in a safe place while they independently forage for food, etc., without them. Um, this fact was exemplified in this year's hunt when a hunter harvested a lactating female whose cub was later um, located. We have listened to sportsmen's claim that using hounds allows them to sex a bear and be selective. Yet despite the use of trail cameras, ATVs, and dogs equipped with GPS tracking collars, in this year's hunt, with a ratio of two to one male-female bears, six of the 14 bears harvested were female, one of whom was lactating, the other five weighing only 150 pounds, one of whom was described uh, as the, by the field agent checking the bear in as, quote, ribs poking out, stomach sucked up into the body cavity, not fat, not good, especially for this late in the season, end of quote. Um, one has to wonder about the hunted population in general because these are hardly trophy animals by Boone and Crockett standards. Female bears are the cornerstone in Nevada's small bear population, and at the time of the hunt, those of reproductive age are either pregnant or with dependent cubs. Until and unless it can be shown how hunting these female bears is helping protect and conserve Nevada bears, we ask that the commission exclude female bears from being hunted. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Public Comment, Reno. Thank you very much. Chairman, yeah. members, uh, my name is Lloyd Peek. I'm here for myself uh, this morning. Uh, in reviewing this, the support material for this meeting, <clears throat> I noted with interest uh, the following statement from Game Division Administrator Brian Wakeland as follows, and I quote, Endow is a state agency that must balance the biological needs of wildlife, statutory mandates, and social desires of the public, close quote. This statement certainly seems consistent with the applicable public trust doctrine, and aspects concerning public opinion are particularly important regarding the bear hunt in light of the fact that I think it's fair to say uh, the hunt has, since its inception, uh, been amongst the most controversial and contentious hunts in the history of this state. I appreciate the statement given by Mr. Wakelin yesterday to have human dimensions questions concerning the bear hunt in Nevada possibly included in a broader national survey of public opinion on wildlife issues. However, at this time, there is no such data whatsoever in terms of any proposed survey or scientific data to accurately and scientifically assess public perceptions about the hunting about hunting black bears and the methods of doing so in Nevada. Recall that this issue has been before this commission now for over three years, but yet here we are once again to set a quota for yet another bear hunt without any such information. In light of these circumstances, I respectfully request that the quota for the 2016 bear hunt be set at one. Thank you. Public comment, Reno. <clears throat> Tom Fennell, Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. Uh, I don't think that anybody in this room ever wants to see black bears go away from the spectrum, and we certainly don't. However, we do feel that they should be managed objectively, and we should take the motion and the attachment to a certain species out of that equation. Our black bear populations are at 30 year highs and bears are expanding both numerically and geographically. So we're not talking about harvesting an animal that's facing population growth challenges. 
And Dow is one of the longest running black bear studies in the country. And I believe that we should listen to these experts. And as such, we support the quota as proposed. Thank you. Additional public comments in Reno? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Don Wilde, I can't resist uh, following the end of you, uh, suggesting that we shouldn't make an iconic animal out of an ordinary wildlife species when they represent big horn sheep, which of course is the most iconic animal that you manage. Uh, the bear population has no reason, uh, uh, the fact that the department feels that the bear population is increasing is meaningless. There's no basis for assuming that the population is increasing because the habitat, <clears throat> the drought, and all of that uh, suggests otherwise. Uh, but let me be clear about one thing. We are killing more than 10% of our bears. The most recent population numbers I've seen run around 450 bears. And if you look historically at the last four years since the hunt has been added, we've basically been killing 50 bears a year from all mortality sources that we hardly list. And that interests me because although there's not a comparable number for bears, we know with recent mountain lion research that the mountain lion population, a stable population, can sustain a kill rate of more than, in Colorado, 11%, or in the state of Washington, 14%. And there's no reason to assume that bears are more rapid reproducers than mountain lions. In fact, they're probably slower. So we are currently killing over 10% of our bear population. There's no reason to assume that the population is increasing. And I think that it's probably, and given that your sample size is so small and that bears are killed according to hunter preference and not random, it seems to me it's time to reconsider the matter and see whether we should be more concerned. Okay, next public comment, Reno. Lynn Collins representing the Mountain Lion Foundation um, <clears throat> and our 300 supporters in Nevada, but fully growing. Um, we're here to support the request of the bear advocates to um, reduce the quota um, for the bear hunt to one this year. Um, and I don't pretend to be an expert in bear numbers. Um, I'd like to echo the two statements um, that are made by other speakers representing that bear populations are very, very slow to increase. And like many other predators, this is one of the reasons that my organization and others are particularly concerned about the hunting, trophy, sport, or otherwise of large carnivores um, and large omnivores that are major predators in our ecosystems. Because their birth rates are so low, and because they're, they're the um, mother bears, the mother mountain lions, um, spend up to two years with their offspring to take um, indiscriminately um, um, mountain lions or bears in a hunting a trophy season um, is repugnant to most of our members. Um, there have been a few statements about the fact that, or the belief, that uh, no compromise would be acceptable to organizations such as mine. But I want to point out that we're not here objecting to um, your quota setting or even pretending that we are experts in the area of quota setting for many other big game species, um, prey species that were traditionally prey um, not only for humans but also for these large um, predators. Um, so we're not here telling you how many uh, mule deer to hunt. Um, what we are saying is that there is a difference between sport hunting or trophy hunting of large carnivore and omnivore species that are traditionally at the top of the food chain and the hunting of other species that, were, that are the prey of those species um, for human tables. And <clears throat> while my organization takes no stance on hunting as a whole, um, we do oppose um, the hunting of bears, cougars, wolves, coyotes, other mammals that are that serve as in that predator role in our ecosystems. And I think it's an important distinction. I also want to bring up the question of emotion. 
Um, animal um, advocates such as myself are often accused of approaching these issues emotionally and without concern about population management. We are very concerned about population management and frankly if we felt and believed that these populations, bears, mountain lions in Nevada were adequate and that the oversight of those populations was um, given a great deal of concern we wouldn't be standing here at this podium. We're here because we're literally worried about those populations. But let's go to emotion. Yes, I'm emotional when we lose a bear or a mountain lion. But let's not pretend that emotion doesn't drive the sport and the trophy hunt, because it does. So we're all here, and you're here, to hear the views of all of Nevada not only those of the hunting community, not only those of the community that believes that animals have rights that extend beyond, um, that, that extend beyond their being hunted as a trophy animal, and not only to hear the views of scientists who will tell you facts and figures. You're here because there is an emotional, a human, a psychological, and a cultural significance to these decisions. And I want to urge you to consider that p potentially the decision to establish a bear hunt in Nevada in the first place was simply a bad decision. It's moving backwards in time. There's not ever going to be a time when there will be sufficient bears to satisfy the need for someone to want to have a trophy um, a bear in their living room that's going to be able to keep up with the population growth in Nevada. So, Given the public outcry against this hunt, I'd really urge you all to consider potentially seeing us work together to do away with this hunt in future years and setting the quota at one today. Thank you. Oh, you guys want to clap. We're not going to do that because we're not going to disturb the meeting, but come on up. I'm Kathy Smith, I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I also request that the commission decrease the uh, bear hunt quota to one. What we did here yesterday, the population is increasing at a rate of six to 10% per year based upon the sex, depending upon the sex of the bear. However, again, we were given population estimates in both 2011 and 2014 that demonstrate, if they are accurate, that the population is not increasing at even half of that rate even when you use the lower confidence level in 2011 and the higher confidence level in 2014. If you can't back into a prior year's population estimate or predict the future population of animals, what function does land of, how, how can both be accurate, a population increasing and a population estimate that's not increasing? Anyway, um, of the last three bears killed between November 11th and December 12th, they were all small female bears. A bear killed on November 12th was a female weighing 175 pounds. There was a comment that the bear had little fat, so little fat she was almost given a two for condition out of a scale of one to five. The last bear was a small six-year-old female bear weighing 150 pounds. Her condition was weighted as three, average. Yet despite this, in the description of her condition, and I quote, dry female, not in good shape, ribs poking out, stomach sucked up in the body cavity, not fat, not good, especially for this late in season. Out of the last seven bears killed, five were females weighing an average of 165 pounds. If these hunters could kill a large boar, don't you think they would prefer it? These are small female bears, some of which may have been pregnant, which means they would have been entering hibernation at low rate. <coughs> bears lose 15 to 30 percent of their weight during hibernation. If they are lactating, weight loss can increase to 40 percent. Low weight bears can and often lose their pregnancies. These small female bears are being chased by hounds around the planet, adding just one more level of difficulty for survival. 75% of the bears killed in the last two hunts were killed in Unit 291, a unit that we do not know the density of bears nor the population. A recent talk presented to the Wildlife Society discussed the problems that can develop when large boars are killed in an area. Sows will choose the large boars they prefer. 30 seconds. But will choose a substandard younger mate who may be related when these are not available. 
without large, large juvenile bears do not disperse normally. I was at the county meeting last week. We went over different quotas for each unit involving many different game animals. Many, if not most, other states hunt bears by units as well. In Nevada, we're killing small female bears. Our state can do better. Please give the bears a break and vote for a quarter of one. I wanted to close with a quote and a picture to hand out to all of you. Uh, bringing the animals that we, just, that we study too close and keeping them too distant are equal bias-inducing bias if what you need to do is see them in true focus. And at the risk of disclosing too much personal information, I weigh 140 pounds. And this is the type of animal that we're killing in the pine nuts. Okay, we could have our next speaker come up while Ms. Smith hands the photos up. Hi, my name is Dan Warren. Um, I would like to uh, thank the commission for hearing us. I'd like to encourage, um, listen to everything I've heard here, is that we still go off from intelligent biologists, um, you know, and I'm hoping that everyone in here doesn't think that we're just rolling the dice and not coming up with the, what they've determined and taking everything into account, which I know they have. I encourage the commission to uh, approve the science-based um, information here and to um, go along with the recommendations of the biologists. Thank you. Next public comment, Reno. Rex Flowers speaking on behalf of myself. Um, I'm a little concerned with quota of 41 and 4. I think it should be higher. All other game species, we do our uh, quota setting by prior three-year three averages, success rates, uh, and then we take into consideration any anomalies. Uh, bear hunt's been going on for five years now. It's had two anomalies. Year two, they only killed 11 bears. Year four, they killed 18. Well, no year we have a harvest objective. Uh, when you average the last three years together, that, that's an average of 15 bears per year, 75% of what the harvest could be. That equates uh, to a much higher quota, uh, actually up around 60. Uh, I would not ask for that, but I would ask you to support Washoe County. Actually, I sent a request to Washoe County at 50 and 5. Uh, please give consideration to the fact that we no longer hunt bears in the last 30 days of the year. So that, given that fact, and the fact that we harvest one bear every year in December on an average, uh, that's going to reduce that 15 to 14. So there is room to increase the quota without doing damage to the bear. Thank you. Next public comment, Reno. My name is Carol Ann Weed, and I'm speaking as a, mem as a member of the majority of Nevada residents who do not hunt and do not want Nevada's small and declining bear population to be even further decimated with a continuing trophy hunt. A trophy bear hunt means killing the biggest and healthiest bears possible for their fur, feet, claws, head, and organs. My family, friends, and other people with whom I come in contact at the events such as Nevada Day, Earth Day, etc., do not understand how this trophy bear hunt can be justified to accommodate a minority of Nevada residents while endangering the sustainability of a declining population to reproduce healthy offspring. This, re this is referred to as low genetic diversity because of a small population. Although black bears typically produce cubs every two years, when their natural foods are scarce during a four-year drought, such as Nevada is experiencing, it may take three or four years for mothers to build up enough body reserves to be able to produce the next litter. Females especially should never be trophy hunted in a small, let alone a declining population. Even though it is against the law to hunt a lactating female, we have an eyewitness account that these females are taken and in one case killed along with her cub. Laws are broken, of this we can always be sure. Females nurture and train their cubs for about two years and may keep them hidden in a den while foraging for food. 
A trophy hunter may then guess that this female is available for killing, but they will in reality have just killed a mother and one or two cubs who will not likely survive without her. Bears in Nevada are not just trophy hunted, however. They are also in danger of being killed by vehicles and the Department of Wildlife. The Department of Wildlife also chooses to kill some bears because human residents make a choice to not behave responsibly in the proper handling of their personal garbage. The available garbage then becomes an attractive to bears who are residents of the same region. These bears could be saved if responsible residents who choose to move into bear country were mandated by Endow to have bear-proof garbage containers the second time their trash attracted a bear, thereby eliminating the need to remove the bear from his historic habitat or finally kill the bear because of repeat offenses encouraged by humans. If there must be a trophy bear hunt to accommodate a minority of hunters, then let it be one bear, one male bear, and zero females. Let's behave responsibly with our bear community and keep it healthy for future generations to enjoy. Thank you. Public comment. Thank you. Yes, good morning, Bobby McCollum. I'm concerned that this commission will render a decision about the bear quota. I'm sorry, Miss, would you please restate your name? We're just making sure I'm we sorry. have everyone documented. Bobby McCollum. Thank you. I'm concerned that this commission will render a decision about the bear quota based on guesses, maybes, and what ifs of Nevada's bear population. In the three year bear management uh, report, the bear population for the area encompassing the Carson Range, Virginia Range, and Pine Nut Mountains was, in 2008, 262 plus or minus. In 2011, 456 plus or minus. In 2014, 445 plus or minus, which is a decrease. If you compare the population figures in the three-year report with those reported in the annual Big Game status book figures, you'll see the population numbers are inconsistent. In the 2010-11 status book, the bear population was estimated to be between 200 and 300 adult animals at the end of 2008. No population figure was quoted for the year 2010. In the 11-12 status book, the 2008 population was 253 plus or minus, not the 262 quoted in the three-year report. Further, the population status section of this annual report does not indicate whether the population estimate covers the entire state or a portion of it. In the 12-13 status book, the bear population in western Nevada was estimated to be 400 to 700. That is an extremely wide range and seems like a guess. It tells the public that the bear population is unknown. In the 13-14 status book, the 2008 population figure reverts back to the figures quoted in the three-year report and makes those figures specific to the area encompassing the Carson Range, Virginia Range, and Pine Nut Mountains. The statewide bear population was 600 at the end of 13, according to the report. Moving on to the 14-15 status book, the bear population remained at 600, in indicating no increase statewide in the bear population. There's a bear management program in place to handle problems, and there is no documented increase in the population. There's no reason to continue the bear hunt as in past years. I will support the uh, quota of one. Thank you. Thanks, public comment, Reno. Thank you. Um, hi, thank you for um, being here and listening to us. I'm Carolyn Starr from Klein Village. Um, some things yesterday from Mr. Wakeling's presentation that I took away with was there's an 8% growth in our population. He said we might be reaching population, <coughs> maximum population carrying capacity, and Endow is doing the most extensive study on the bear population in the United States. And 55% of the bears killed last year were in hit, hunt unit number 291. So, if the bears are increasing at 8%, why is it that in 2011, the study said there's 456 bears, and in 2014, there's 445 bears? That's not increasing at 8%, that's decreasing. So, with the, the other thing that I don't understand, and I don't, that I don't understand is, with the most extensive capture study in the United States, why is it that, 
the commissioners and the department are not asking for air density populations by unit number. Um, and why has that not been provided? NDAL has gone on record in the media saying that there is 200 to 300 bears within the Tahoe Basin. That includes California side. So with that, why are we again not breaking out bear populations by unit number? And until the bear population densities is recorded and reported by unit number, I ask that you err on the side of caution and um, ask that you err on the side of caution for this year. And <coughs> wildlife <coughs> populations by unit number are required for every single wildlife animal that you guys will be talking about today, but not for bears. Why not? And again, it's the most extensive bear population in the United States, so why can we not provide that? And after five years of drought, um, asking that you please give the bears break this year and set the program. Thank you. Thank you. Additional public comment, Marino? Anyone else? Last call? Um, Sean Shea, Washington County. Um, you want to hear some? Sean, this is a personal comment. Yes, not personal. Personal. Yes, sir. I'm thinking, you know, from Washington County, but this is for myself. Um, there are some elegant speakers. You know, I have to give them credit. They're, you know, they feel really very passionate. I do too about this. Um, I don't see. I, I mean, this is the research that Nevada is doing right now is incredible. I mean, if you look at all through the state, the expansion of these bears. I mean, you, you guys have seen the, the video or the, the slideshow that shows where you're starting to see bears show up now. I mean, if you look at the United States, bear population is an explosion right now. I mean, that's a positive thing. And um, there's nothing about them being endangered. And I, there's not one person, in, including the people that hunt, that want to see bears go away. You know, I like to see a healthy population. And to be honest with you, most of these people that probably get up here have never been out looking for bears. I do. I mean, I look for sign. I, I run dogs. I do everything. And um, and, and trust me, that, that's the last thing I want to see. That I would hate to see the population um, crash or, or, or trying to get rid of it. And um, I just want to put that from my personal thing. I see at least one more. Hi, um, my name is Jennifer Simeo. I had sent um, some comments to you on Friday. I just wanted to reiterate that um, I would like the bear quota this year for 2000 and 2016 to be set at one. Last call, one more. My name is Bob Cook, and I'm a resident of Douglas County, and I'm speaking for myself. And uh, I'd just like to say that um, hunters are the largest group of conservationists, and we value each and every animal uh, that lives. And um, if they're, we feel they're threatened, then we put them on the endangered species or the wildlife. The U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife Service will do that. I know that we followed the uh, Bear Committee's original recommendations, and uh, that was done by scientists and biologists. And um, I don't know why they're calling it a tro trophy hunt. My personal feeling is uh, I, I really value everybody's opinions here. It's really a, a, a hard subject, and uh, we're all passionate about it. Um, if there's a sick or a extremely undernourished animal, uh, I'd rather see that animal taken than one that was healthy and was going to produce and survive and propagate. One of my, uh, another subject that I'm really um, passionate about is years ago, I know that the Department of Wildlife really tried to compromise with the No Bear Hunt Nevada. And uh, in that, they gave in and allowed no bear hunting from the Tahoe drainage side. It's the easiest way I can explain it. Yet we can still hunt everything else. We still have all the bears, the problem bears, 
in all of the areas that we all live at the lake, which is where I live. And we still hunt everything else. Uh, the deer, the rabbits, the blue grouse, anything that lives there that's uh, uh, legal to hunt, we still do it. Yet we can't hunt the bear. And I think if we look at that, took another look at it, we talked about opening that back up. Um, it might reduce some of the human bear conflicts. Um, hunters know what the rules are as far as hunting um, around personal property and that and um, and I think it's something that we need to reconsider moving forward and it'll be my recommendation personally uh, until we get a result. Thank you. Any further public comments? Corner Gorder, Mr. Chairman. Come on up to the microphone. Mr. Chairman Don Moldy-Reno, Sean Shea spoke twice. I spoke as an individual. I'd like to speak now as uh, representing the Nevada Wildlife Alliance. I don't believe anyone has spoken from the Nevada Wildlife Alliance, no. so yeah. I'll allow you to speak on their behalf. Briefly. Yep. Uh, this hunt is not a biological event. This is a political event. There was no bear hunting in Nevada for some 80 years. And then, uh, a wildlife commission appointed by Governor Gibbons decided that it would be a good idea. The public has overwhelmingly opposed this hunt ever since it came into being. Nevada has probably the smallest black bear population in the country. <clears throat> the numbers are debatable. Uh, the sample size of the bears that are killed is so small that there's no statistical significance that's going to be able to be determined on the sample size for another decade or so. This is nothing but a political event. It's nothing but a hunter opportunity event, uh, since that's the holy grail that runs this system. <clears throat> but I'm not sure that that's sufficient to trump the public opposition. And by the way, the public owns these animals. <clears throat> we all do. You do. I do. And there's no mandate to kill these animals in the law. There's no reason that we have to do this. And frankly, I'm a little tired of the hunter opportunity. I think in this case, the public has clearly spoken. I think they've trumped hunter opportunity, as far as I'm concerned. And given that this is purely a political event to begin with, and in my view, continues to be, I think it's really time to dump this whole thing. I know we have a statutory <clears throat> requirement that you can't close the season, without some biological data, but you know what? Quote of one is beginning to make sense. Thank you. Okay. Last call. You speak on my own, right? No, because you've used, here, let me explain this so that everyone's clear. When the county advisory reports come up and present their comments, when I first call for that, they're speaking on behalf of their county, okay? When I take public comment, I allow six minutes for organizations and three minutes for individuals. If you want to use that time to fill up your organizational comment, that I'm going to give you the six minutes, but I'm not going to give you six as an organization and three. Like Mr. Moldy did, he presented for about a minute as an individual and about two minutes as his organization. And so I'm trying to keep it fair and above board. I provided six minutes for your organization. If you would have used under that and wanted to use the remaining time, we would have done that. But, but I still don't fairness, understand why I as an individual can't speak. Because you elected to take your time to represent No Bear Hunt Nevada for six minutes. But now I want to represent myself and others have. That's because they're on county advisory boards or they've used less than the six minutes. That doesn't seem fair because that's you just allowed Don to, do, to speak on his own, uh, speak for it. Because he spoke, for, he spoke for three total minutes. He could have spoke for six. Thank you. Additional public comment. Okay. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commission questions or discussion? Chairman Nadger, I have a couple questions. Commissioner Hubs. Um, well, I my stance has not changed since we set the season. Um, I find 
uh, this conversation is actually personally very uncomfortable for me to listen to, um, um, just on a personal level. But I have some issues with the way and questions with the way that we're managing, I guess, um, as Lynn Collins mentioned, our large predators as game species. It seems to be a bit different than our um, elk, uh, antelope, deer, where we're doing intense surveys and we're really watching the trends and in the data where we're looking at the hunting for the bears and we're looking for the hunting on the mountain lion, which I have questions about as well, I don't see that intensity. Um, and it makes me question whether or not the department is watching those numbers. Um, and I also have some questions as to why or when we ever do set quotas for mountain lions. Is that even something that the department does? So probably the department, either Mr. Jackson or Mr. Wafer. Brian? Hey, Brian, the big bucks for right there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Hubs, would you mind repeating? I didn't completely follow that. Well, I guess my question is um, when we're managing our large predators as <coughs> game species, we're looking at, for instance, this catalog that some people read to go to sleep and some people read of interest, like Chairman Drew, but um, when we look at the big game status, which is very interesting. I did notice the difference between the way that we're monitoring our black bear populations and mountain lion populations and the way we're monitoring our ungulates, I guess that's what we would say. And, I, and it would be a different strategy, I'm sure, because you're going to have the large predators and not grouped together, not easy to go fly over and get an aerial survey number. But um, like, for instance, with the black bear, um, there's just a cumulative count, which doesn't really tell us that much. We did get an estimate of five to 700 yesterday, but I don't really know how we got to that number. And when I looked at the mountain lions, I see what we've taken, but I don't see any reporting on what we think their um, densities are, or number, abundance numbers are. Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Hubs. Um, the way that uh, state wildlife agencies manage uh, the uh, top predators versus the way they uh, uh, manage ungulate species tends to differ dramatically, and, I, and you picked up on that. Um, ungulate species um, tend to be um, a very much more numerous. Um, we're uh, able to uh, conduct uh, surveys and actually uh, visually inspect and, you know, in observe them as we're conducting those surveys. Um, it's more challenging to do so with a uh, secretive predator species, or any species for that matter, uh, that is uh, uh, smaller in numbers. And so there's a, a variety of techniques, um, and uh, with the bear populations that we manage within, the, within Nevada, uh, we're actually affording ourselves two different approaches. Um, with the, um, and, I, and I tried to identify those, those yesterday, one is by looking at the, uh, the harvest statistics. And so, um, and again, based on uh, peer refereed research that's been done, um, not just in Nevada, but in other states, we look at the characteristics of that harvest. And uh, we try to look at it over time to determine uh, whether or not uh, the level of exploitation is at a, a, a level at which we would expect to see that population um, in decline. So uh, there are three parameters that we look at within that harvest characteristics, and I, and I don't have them in front of me, but I presented them for the pine nuts, and I presented them for the, uh, the state population in general. And based on the, um, the proportion of females, the proportion of adult females, and the age of males that are harvested, all those indications are that we are harvesting this population likely. You know, that, that's looking at the harvest demographics. The other aspect of it is we continue to um, radio tag and monitor the population. And uh, we talk about this as being a small population, and we try to talk about this as a, you know, a, a finite area. It's important to recognize that Nevada's population is part of the Sierra Nevada 
uh, population. So there's a substantial portion of that population that also occurs uh, within California, extends into Oregon. And what we're seeing is the ebb and flow of population growth. And so trying to um, uh, infer that a, uh, um, a limited uh, take within Nevada, uh, we have, we have uh, elk populations that you'll hear about later today. It's one of the things that we consider as part of our uh, deer recommendations as well. We have migratory herds that move between states. We have a similar situation with our bear population. When you look at the overall population that's, that's interconnected, um, the estimates are somewhere between 10,000 and 15,000 animals. Um, you know, California hunts this population, and they annually harvest about 1,000 animals over there. So it's, we're looking at a very small segment of the population, and, and uh, it's interconnected with, uh, with a larger area, but we are doing the radio collaring and the monitoring of the population itself, and we are also looking at the harvest demographics. Both of those aspects with this bear population indicates that we are not, um, this is not a heavy level of exploitation. Thank you. Additional comments? Brian, while you're up there, I'm going to have one question for you, but additional <coughs> questions for Brian while he's at the microphone? No, um, I, when I spoke with Director Wasley about this a while ago, um, about the population numbers. I was concerned perhaps that we, um, there might be concern. I don't, that's really not why um, I think, I think this is more socio-political, as Mr. Moldy mentioned. I, um, I think what's happening is the department has stepped on the public's toes and they're letting you know it hurts. And so I'm hoping, you know, serving as the general public in that position, um, that's why I'm supporting the public stance on that. I think it's just a little too far. And I definitely hope some of our commissioners will not increase numbers at this time because I think that will just elevate things. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, I think, uh, uh, Staff Specialist Jackson kind of tried to point out at the, at the outset, um, if you, if you uh, look at the direction that the department's been provided, uh, we have a, a bear management plan that has these indices within it. And based on the indices within that plan, um, the department would be coming forward with recommendations to increase tags at this time based on the, what we've seen within that. Um, however, because of the three-year comprehensive review that was submitted to the legislature by the Bear Committee and approved by the, the Commission, um, that committee should, uh, recommended that everything largely be held static. Um, and what we hope to do through the Harvest Guidelines process is get the Commission to reaffirm or provide new direction to the Department uh, when we come back with that for future hunts. Um, the recommendation that we provided uh, for the department or for the commission's consideration is consistent with the uh, that three-year comprehensive review. So Brian, indulge me for just a minute. Um, I'll just kind of throw out where I'm at. Um, I've always been a proponent because this is a new hunt and because of the sensitivity on all sides of this, uh, of trying to keep things static and seeing where we are. If we would have seen a huge drop off in the population or a huge <coughs> increase in, in take of female bears, I would have raised the red flag and had no issue cutting quotas, <coughs> cutting seasons, whatever we needed to do. So that being said, um, I can certainly see the argument for increasing the quota, um, not the objective, the quota, based on the fact that we've removed a month out of the season, based on the fact that we've never reached the objective <coughs> of 20. My personal concern with that is I think we're getting to a point where we have a heavy focus and harvest in 291. Um, when we started the very first year of the bear hunt, we had a female quota of six statewide. And the concern with that um, is a lot of the harvest took place early in the hunt and the thought was that people were concerned or the, the tag holders were concerned that we were gonna reach the quota of six and the season was gonna be shut off. So they dropped their selectivity to simply harvest a bear. So based on that, um, what we did in 2012 is we removed the statewide female quota. And it worked. We only had one female harvested in 2012. We only had one female, or four, excuse me, harvested in 2013. But in the last two years, that approach hasn't necessarily worked. We've had six females harvested in 2014 and six harvested in 2015. 
One strategy that we haven't tried, which is attempted in other states, is to set female quotas or harvest objectives by unit. And this is something I've expressed interest in having the department explore. Um, I think the concern is still there that if we do that, there would be concern that, that tag holders would be less selective at what they harvest. Um, and I get that concern. And at the same time, um, I think it would be a safety valve to make sure we do not have an overharvest of female bears in any one unit. So my concept would be, um, say you put a female quota of four in unit 192 and four at 194, and if that objective is met, that unit closes, not the statewide hunt, but that unit. And the department has not recommended that strategy. Um, but I'll tell you right now, without a strategy and a safety valve like that, I'm personally not comfortable increasing quotas. Um, I would like to see the department seriously consider that approach the next time they bring quotas to us. I think today what I would err on is staying static. Um, but I would certainly like a more formal explanation as to why we think that would or would not work. So that's where I stand. I don't know, there's probably not a question in there. Um, I don't know if you want to address any different strategies that I mentioned or the department's view on those, but. Mr. Chairman, um, members of the commission, um, the, uh, the, the suggestion of uh, using essentially a harvest limit uh, within uh, specific units um, is a strategy that, uh, that was employed by Arizona. Um, there is uh, an analysis that I've recently completed. I'm not sure that I'm, to, to respond on the fly, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm prepared to do so, um, but I'd certainly be willing to, to uh, try and prepare a response for the commission's consideration and certainly include that as part of the harvest guidelines. Okay. Additional a, questions? Yeah, a few more questions, questions while you're up there. Um, I did have a question too. I this is another species in general, but then just about the quotas of the is there a quota for a mountain lion or does the department do that? Am I missing something? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Hubs, um, yes, the, there is a uh, uh, the, the quota uh, or the, the harvest limit um, is established as part of the uh, season setting uh, that occurred back in January, okay. and it's established on a, uh, a, a regional basis at this point in time. Um, <coughs> according to the NAC, um, the, the, the commission has to uh, establish that quota. And uh, we, um, at this point in time, we're looking at harvest characteristics of of the of the lion population as well. Uh, lion population is much more ubiquitous than our bear population, and uh, uh, probably uh, uh, less sensitive. Um, are just based on the uh, the level of removal and the harvest characteristics that we've seen. Uh, we have we have no indication that our our mountain lion population is being uh, overexploited at this point in time either. Okay, because there was mention in the east where they were taking kind of smaller cats, mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't unsure as to why. And of course, I was thinking, well, maybe they're being over harvested in the east. And then when I looked at the data, there was no quota in the, the big game management. So I, it was not consistent like the other species. So it started to make me think, how can you begin to compare and contrast if the quota is not there with the numbers taken? Yeah, there, um, I apologize, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, the, the commission does establish that in January uh, with as part of the season setting, and so there is. That's what I was going to mention. Oh, one last question about the dogs. Um, is that the only way to hunt there is the use of the dogs? I mean, because I know that that bothers a lot of a lot of comments that are coming in to me. It's just the use of the dogs in general really disturbs the general public. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, no, that is not the only way to to, uh, to hunt bears. Um, in fact, um, in uh, you know, there's uh, in a lot of other states, um, you know, uh, probably one of the more common ways is to uh, to find a situation and sit and blow a call, um, you know, basically sounding as, as you would use to hunt a lot of other predators. You use a, uh, something, wounded rabbit call or something of that nature. 
that can be very successful. Sitting, glassing, um, spotting, socking. Uh, there's a lot of different approaches to uh, to how uh, bears may be hunted, and uh, uh, so there 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 are other options. <coughs> Additional questions for Brian while he's up? Okay, seeing none, further discussion by the commission. Commissioner McNish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, not so much discussion. I think I think it's uh, I've made my, my stance on it pretty clear over the last few years. Um, and the further down the path we go, the more more this hunt becomes a liability in my mind. It, and that's just a broad general statement. Um, you know, there's a lot of unanswered questions still in my mind, and, I, and I'll go and I'll say it again. I've said it before. I, I have a lot of faith in the department's biologists. I do, and uh, um, but the nature of the beast is is that a lot of the a lot of the science uh, associated with the uh, well with predators in general, but, um, in my mind, the black bear, um, uh, are they're challenging. It's it, they're subjective, and. Um, I guess if I felt more comfortable that uh, I understand the concept of being conservative and I understand the concept of, uh, but, but we're dealing with small sample sizes, I'm not convinced that we can detect um, a significant change in the population uh, quickly enough to, uh, to do something about it. I just don't. Um, real frustrated with the suggestions of raising the quotas. Um, I'd really like to know what science that's based on. Um, especially when the department has set a had a set a, uh, a quota suggestion, um, but um, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I've heard that I've heard quest, uh, suggestions that we might be hitting some carrying capacity. I'm definitely concerned about the female tank. I've expressed my concerns about the hunt units. Um, maybe the same concern that you're, you're expressing. Um, I have concerns with the methods of hunt. All these things have been have been issues for me. Um, uh, maybe a little less with the immigration emigration issue because we're talking about the same population. But there was going to be discussion about the movement of the, the animals on the on the fringe of their of, of this population. Uh, we really haven't uh, pursued that, and um, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not going to be in support of a, a quota for for these for the bear hunt today and. and uh, um, until I feel more comfortable about um, that kind of stuff. And the socio-economic, the socio-political thing, more the sociology, the sociology side, the social social side of this, starting to weigh more and more on me. Um, definitely, um, it, it's, we got bigger things to, to pursue out there. And uh, I see this as a liability to some of that. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm willing to, you know, cut cut bait on some of this stuff to, to focus on some really significant things. And uh, that's just kind of where I stand right now. I'm sure I'll have more comment. Okay. Additional comments? Mr. Johnston. Thank you, Chairman Drew. I'd like to go through uh, a few points. Uh, there was a suggestion that there is no hunt that this commission would not approve. Uh, that, I believe, is a demonstrably false statement. We have taken time to look at seasons, both for this bear hunt and to shorten it, but we're concerned for uh, the wildlife. We have done the same with respect to elk seasons. We painstakingly go through the quotas as we will go through today. So the suggestion that this commission will just approve any hunt uh, without limitation um, is false. Um, second, it, uh, the, some of the public comment seems to suggest that Nevada is like this outlier because it has a bear hunt. Bear hunting occurs throughout the United States, it occurs in Canada, it occurs throughout the world. So this notion that Nevada is somehow out there by itself with this hunt is, is just not true. Um, and we have limitations. I don't believe, I've never even looked at the regulations of what goes into a bear hunt in Nevada because I've never applied for the tag. Some states, and I believe Canadian provinces, you can bait bears. You're not allowed to do that in Nevada. So we have limitations on what you can and can't do that don't exist in other areas. Uh, I don't think I'd probably ever apply for a bear hunt in Nevada. It's just something I don't have an interest in doing. It's something I don't have an interest in doing uh, elsewhere either. 
but just because I don't have an interest in doing it um, doesn't mean I'm opposed to it. It's just not my cup of tea, for lack of a better term. Uh, and in fact, you know, I had the, the opportunity to be up in Alaska last November on Kodiak Island. One of the neatest things about doing that deer hunt was the opportunity to see uh, bears on a daily basis. Uh, big brown bears, sometimes a little nerve wracking to know they're all around you, but uh, it was great. Um, <coughs> And when I look at the numbers, when I look at the hear from the cabs, I hear from groups like NBU, and I look at 2,339 people applied for this hunt last year, um, there's some support from it, for it. There is interest in it. It is not the public is overwhelmingly opposed to this bear hunt. Um, there's been comments about the nut and harvest and the pine nuts. But yesterday, Mr. Wakeling told us that even with those numbers in the harvest in the planet, the harvest is light compared to the population numbers. Uh, and I go back to what the department presented us yesterday, which is uh, that the harvest was light, that the population is continuing to grow, and that the hunt is not having an impact on the population growth of black bears in Nevada. And I bring all that together, and then I get down and I sit here and I hear this is one of the most studied black bear populations in the country. The Department of Wildlife is doing that study. Those studies were occurred before the hunt existed. My fear, though, is if the hunt is ended, will the sportsmen continue to support the department's exist, uh, extensive studies of the black bear population in Nevada? if the hunt doesn't exist. Because the department relies on sportsmen's dollars to operate. I believe that conservation through hunting occurs not only in the United States, but throughout the world. I've had the opportunity and privilege to experience it and see it with my own eyes. And uh, I have the confidence that if this is the most studied population, and the department is saying these quota numbers and these harvest objectives are or will not negatively impact the population of black bears in Nevada. I accept that. We went through detailed information yesterday from Mr. Wakeling. Um, and I wrote down several things. We have, uh, I, I believe it was not peer reviewed, but peer refereed population reviews. <laughs> Yeah, that it's a moderate to light harvest, and the pine nuts the harvest was light. And I believe what I wrote down was the hunt is having no effect on the population growth rate, although that population growth rate is slowing. I add all those things into the mix, and I'm absolutely prepared to support the quota as presented. I would even entertain going along with the cabs to increase uh, the quota and the harvest objective. Uh, but given the public reaction to that, I'm going to stick with the quota uh, and harvest objective as presented by the department. I hope the cabs and understand why, uh, but that's where I am. Okay. Additional discussion? Comments? Commissioner Wallace? Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Um, I think Commissioner Johnston covered it pretty well on the bases. Um, I'm in support of the department and using their biology in their presentation yesterday. And um, I, I'm not into entertaining an increase in the quota, but uh, <coughs> quota is set as it is, very conservative, and I, I support the department. Okay. Additional commissioner comments? Commissioner Hubs? Yes, I, I do have a comment. <coughs> I know um, as I have been serving in this role as commissioner, being fairly new, not um, having, carrying the history with me on a lot of uh, aspects of what we talk about at each commission meeting, um, I think I have been out in the community talking a little bit more to people, trying to get a feel for how they feel about wildlife in general. Um, so over the last few months, I have just inadvertently asked questions of individuals that I have never asked before. Uh, particularly about hunting and sportsmen. And what I could tell you in regard to this hunt stri is it's strikingly different, the response I get when the residents of Nevada find out that there is a bear hunt. Because mind you, 
the large majority of them do not even know it exists. Um, and they are appalled, appalled about this hunt. And they think that I'm wrong that this hunt occurs. So uh, it makes me really think that if we were to get out there and dig, um, the, it would be overwhelming, the public's response. I just, I believe a large sector of the public doesn't even know. And I, just as Commissioner Johnston had mentioned that Nevada is not on an island in terms of having a bear hunt, we're certainly not on an island in terms of having a bear hunt without controversy, because I think every state that probably has a bear hunt has some very level of controversy around it. Um, this being a new hunt in Nevada, I think people are uncomfortable about the unknown, even though we've had five seasons. Um, so I can certainly understand that, but it's not unique to that. Right, no, and I understand that, and uh, the majority of individuals that I speak with, individuals that don't hunt at all, you know, they go out to, uh, occasionally to hike, um, to look at wildlife, to, they're outdoors people, they go out biking or whatever it might be, um, are very, very much uh, aware of the hunting that occurs in Nevada, more for the ungulate species, and are completely accepting of that. It's when they, it's when I mention the other, and it's most likely because it is new. They can't believe that it exists. Additional comments or discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd move to approve the resident court of Black Bear any legal weapon hunt 6151 is presented with a court of 41. The non-resident court of Black Bear any legal weapon hunt 6251 is presented with a court of four. The Black Bear harvest objective, the combined resident hunt 6151 and non-resident hunt 6251, the harvest objective is presented at 20. Second. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Johnson and a second by Commissioner Wallace to approve the department's recommendations for CR 16-12 for Hunt 6151, 6251, and the companion harvest objectives for both hunts. Is there any question or discussion on the motion? Commissioner McNair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just suggest that uh, I, I won't be supporting the motion with all the respect. And, uh, um, again, I have all the respect in the world for our, uh, the department's biologists. I just think that there's a number of things that haven't uh, haven't played out in my mind, um, and I'm I'm just to the point where I might have to just see so much more information in terms of uh, you know some of the things that we you know maybe they're coming down the line some things that are probably in the works, but right now I'm not comfortable moving forward. I might prefer to see the quota set of one. Uh, that to me that that's your ultra conservative right there. Understood, Commissioner House. Um, yes, I just want to say I will not be supporting the motion as well. Um, I would possibly entertain a motion in which we reduced either or, or, or eliminated the take of females or reduced the use of dogs or any of those aspects. But um, as the, the numbers and quotas are set right now, I will most likely abstain. Not abstain, excuse Stand me. <laughs> Not support. Okay. Additional questions or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nate. Okay, Mike, by my count, um, we have 4 2 with Hubs and McNinch opposed, and we have three absent commissioners. Okay, that will close out um, the bear hunt, and our next hunt um, is going to be antelope. And before we get into that, I know that was a long <coughs> discussion, so let's take a 10 minute break, and we'll come back at 11.05. <laughs> I'd appreciate it because, yeah, then we can just see. Yeah, it's kind of scribbled. I'm going to have to read my I need to